Welcome back, gang. I hope you're ready for fire. This video is a new guide on Veteran Dungeon, The Cauldron, ESO Update 29. We'll cover a full playthrough, strategies, and even the hard mode. Timestamps are below if you wish to skip ahead. Let's get to it. Okay, we're here in the Chateau, and I'm going to go over some uh, strategies you can use regardless of what build or playstyle you're running. I will come out with a full detailed healer build, and you will see the healer build I'm running in this is not optimized. So don't worry about that specifically. Worry about the strategies more so. Now, what can you do to help optimize your chances of completing this? First, start defensively. When I say defensively, regardless of the class spec, you're going to want to have your DPS, most likely if it's their first time in there, have some self-heal, shield, some defensive mechanic that's independent of the healer. Basic stuff in Elder Scrolls Online. If you're a light magic user, most folks run a harness magic if they're in five light or more. Other stuff you can use, vigor. Um, that's another one that's very good for stamina-based healing. Um, also, melee might have some trouble in this until you get used to the mechanics. So if you have a range option, you have a magic user, it will make it a bit easier to start. Another thing I learned, you're going to want to run some regen food. You'll see we have much higher stat pool on update uh, 29 with champion point 2.0 system. So you can run a little bit of regen food and not die to having 16, 15k health. What I recommend on this magic user that I'm running is this Clockwork Citrus. So what that does is give you a little bit of health, but that max magic and magic recovery is incredible. So this first run, I didn't run it, and I just ran blue food. Yes, I had much ma more max stats, but you're going to see I was out of magic constantly. When I did a couple different runs, again, I switched to this food. Massive, massive results. So Stam has another version of it. Magic has one. And then tanks have some tri-stat that they can run as well. I highly recommend this for the extra magic recovery. Your end goal is to basically run this three DPS, nuke everything, don't even see a mechanic, and have one tank. But to start, probably not going to be the case. So I'd highly recommend defensive alts that are mobile to start, especially if you're a healer or tank. Life giver is perfect. Restoration staff, 28 meter radius, low cost. So when I'm running out of magic constantly, bang, I pop this sucker, it's really fantastic. Whereas Remembrance is not as mobile. So when you're learning the fights, you don't know where to stand, you don't know where to go. Mobility is very, very helpful. So having a defensive alt to kind of get you through the mechanics, then once you know, switch it out for something more offensive and just level things. Speaking of leveling things, something that's worked very well for our groups running magic builds is rotating Destro alts. So Destro alts and meteors, you can have one for single target and then one for AOE. So you can have three people run that, including the healer. Why is that significant? Because you can clear trash mobs and rotate these cyclically, or you can do a real nice burn on one single target. Um, so what we're gonna do throughout this video is kind of rotate our ultimates, time them, and then save them up. Last tank of gas, that 20%, that execute. So when you hit that, you're rebuffed, ultimates are charged your potions are ready bang you fire it off and you breeze through this stuff so last up is potions and consumables make sure you're loaded fully stocked you got repair kits and you're ready to go so your first time in here you're going to probably be popping a lot of these but once you get it done you get it down it'll be much easier so these are some general tips that can help you go from defensive learning the mechanics to absolutely nuking it but let's get to it how do we actually do these fights Start of the dungeon here, just like any dungeon you do it the first time, you're going to get a skill point. I'm going to fast forward through some of the trash, just for brevity's sake. Um, they're really not that big of a concern. Make sure to shield up, heal up, have some self-heals, off-heals if you can. Make sure to charge your ultimates, get ready for the boss fights in between. Pretty standard stuff here, gang. Buckle up, let's burn them. Big old nasty burn to start this fight. Pre-buff, potion. Drop the house on him, get a nice burn. First mechanic up, you'll notice the boss leaning forward, so he's going to apply a red circle on the ground, and the red circles are going to be shooting out shortly thereafter. Here's a quick example of the three red circles that are going to be shooting out at you. Next up, you'll see the boss kind of spit some junk in the air. That's going to let you know that the blobs are coming. Two things happening here. The boss is charging up a heavy, so make sure to bash them, especially if you're the tank. And you'll also notice the green little blobs that will be starting marching towards the boss. Kill the green ones. Now 
Next, I get locked up in the prison mechanic. Notice the red bar above. It just needs to be damaged by a ranged DPS typically. So this is really it. Uh, the boss is close to execute, so we're going to just nuke them, save your alts if you can, dump on them after you get me out of this prison, hit your potions, rebuff. Pretty simple fight here, gang. More of the same here, just a bunch of trash mobs up ahead, some little things, don't step on them, a lot of AoEs. Again, charge your ults, make sure your gear's repaired, your potions are ready to go. Another boss fight. First mechanic up, you're going to see, she's going to point that mace in the air and you're going to see some electric lightning coming. Get out of the way if you see them puppies landing. Next mechanic up is hammer time. She's going to put a big red circle around her, kind of twist, turn, and dunk on whoever's in that circle. Get out of there. So we lost a couple because of that hammer and the damp dot, and we're letting the traps go. Don't worry about it. No big deal. Everyone makes a mistake. First time we're seeing this. Hit a harness, get your uh, buffs up, and then just res if you can. Now you're going to see a lot of ads starting to spawn. We should probably take them out, but if you have enough DPS, you can basically push through it and wipe the boss without. But if you're starting this, don't have the damage per second. Definitely take out the ads and get rid of the traps. So speaking of traps, we're kind of disregarding this mechanic. I would suggest holding block, walking over them to trigger them. Um, if you don't have the damage per second, just push through this mechanic. Really, that's all the mechanics you're going to see. In summary, stay out of red, kill the adds, get rid of the traps, and continue to push the boss getting down to execute where you can do a nice burn and get this over with. Up next, we just have some trash mobs, a little bit of lava. Just use harness, AOE damage, clear it out. No big deal here. First mechanic up is the lava spew. Very simple, red stuff, bad, move out the way. Next up, he's going to hammer the ground, put a little lava pool to the side of him. This is the one the tank needs to avoid, but still stay in melee range. Next, you'll see the two adds that will attack you over and over and over. Pretty much big AoE cleave damage will take care of these guys on top of the boss. Next up, he'll kind of slam the ground similarly, but you'll need to bash this, otherwise the damage will escalate. Next mechanic up, you'll have the fire ring. You'll kind of notice a visually light red ring kind of behind your characters. Either block or dodge roll this. And that's pretty much all the mechanics that you can face here on this guy. He'll do a lot of them in rapid succession. So it's mechanic after mechanic after mechanic. But it's pretty simple stuff. Stay out of red. Harness magic to your friend if you're a magic user. And just burn him when he's in execute.
Nothing really special about the start of the fight. Just kill some ads and that will get the mechanics starting to roll. Did you hear that? That sludge weird sound and that green to the left of the screen? That's the oil that you're going to need to grab. Here's the oil that's going to be placed randomly throughout the map. Big, huge telegraph. It should be easy to find. So if someone's going to grab it, you're going to hear kind of that synergy sound. You're going to get it. You're going to go to these little portal things, and you're going to run to another one, if you can, and then run to the center. That's what's going to damage them. After you damage them, another wave of adds are going to spawn out the center. Kill them. Get ready for that oil again. Again, you'll notice at the top of the screen, the oil. I couldn't hear it because there was so much chaos going on. But just keep your eyes peeled. After you've killed them all, the power modules that is, you'll notice the health bar shrink up. Get ready for the kind of boss phase. Last boss time, and to activate hard mode, look to the left, the little totem, click it to activate it. We actually uh, aggro the boss on accident and get nuked here, so we restart with a fresh pull, and not one of our team members did. First mechanic up you'll see is the AOE cleave. He'll put his arm back with the hammer and you'll notice that red conal. So stay to the side or the rear of the boss. Yeah. 
Next up, after the big massive heavy attack, you'll notice the molten little pillar things. They have a health bar on top of them, so damage them, destroy them, otherwise they'll fill up the entire room. They don't take a whole lot of damage, but big AoE that you can damage the boss simultaneously is super helpful. You'll notice a green circle on the ground sporadically. Pick that up if you're a damage dealer, and then focus your attention to those molten core pillars. Next up, you'll have the flame lines. The big telegraph are the lightning bolts that channel down. So they'll place two flame lines on the opposite end and kind of rotate. So you'll have to move as a group. It takes a lot of movement with the blocks. Ads are gonna be spawning. It's a lot going on. The key with these flame lines is to keep your position neutral to the side if you can, because you wanna avoid the cleave damage at all times. Once he drops that flame line, it's a good time to dump ulties and continue to nuke those molten pillars down before they add up and take you out. So those are the basic mechanics of the fight. It takes a lot of movement, a lot of magic, a lot of recovery, and a little coordination. So try to maintain good movement, good discipline, and if you can get in comms with each other, it will really help coordinating this fight. So a little bit from the healer point of view perspective, what I'm trying to do is optimize my group's efficiency. I want them charged up on magic if I can, and also make sure I'm alive. So heals over time, throwing out those orbs, throwing out those spears, and Resto Alt is very, very handy in this fight because it's high mobility. So also, I'm, I'm not wasting a lot of actions. If I'm sitting around, I'm trying to hit a Synergy or a fully charged heavy attack. So I want to keep my magic peaked because at the end phase, when I'm just sitting there breath of lifing or hitting a Resto Alt, it's going to be very, very challenging. So if you're healing this or you're doing something else, don't know what to do, charge that heavy. Make sure you're using potions on cooldown. Keep moving, keep buffing. It's going to take a lot, a lot of practice to get this down, especially as the ads get overwhelming. Coming up here soon, we do have a group member that goes down. Um, this will happen from time to time. My suggestion to you is do not quit the fight, especially if you have some type of self-heal. A lot of our folks are spec'd for like VMA, Veteran Maelstrom Arena. So if you've done that type of content, you have to be able to sustain yourself. You have to be able to heal yourself or shield up. So it's a good idea to kind of use that mentality when you're in here. Yes, you have a pocket healer, but you see someone goes down, what are you gonna do? So don't give up if someone goes down, you can recover. Harness magic for magic users is your friend. So a friend goes down and what I'm doing is trying to position myself in between the tank as best I can and healing them, pocket healing them. As soon as they get up, you gotta realize they're gonna be out of gas, right? So if you can get them a spear, you can get them um, any type of synergy resource back, it's going to be very imperative because you want that damage up, especially in the end phase. So try to use that your best to position yourself in between the tank and the person being rest. And get ready to burn the sucker. He's almost down. And we got him down, activity complete, what a blast. The dungeon, in my opinion, was underwhelming, but the final boss sure wasn't. So I'm, I'm glad to produce this content. It seems like you really like the old VMA style dungeon guides. And if this is something you want in the future, let me know, like, subscribe, leave a comment, come join Nugget Nation, because I can produce a lot more of this content and I appreciate everyone watching and all of your support. Lots more to come.